Uh, Lucy, where did you go, sweetie pie? Usually you're pretty social. Why don't you come out? Come on out, honey. Hello, can you hear me? Good morning, Mentam Squad out there. I hope you guys have an awesome start to your day. I'm going to just start things off, you guys, real quick. That You guys know a couple weeks ago I got myself a new snake that came in the mail, you guys. And apparently, ever since I got this animal, you guys, it has been pretty picky. Now, disclaimer, this is her sort of like quarantine bin, you guys. She's already eat, taken a couple of meals already within the last few weeks. But for some reason, she has been so picky that the last time I fed her, which was earlier today, by the way... I had to assist feed her because she was just being so, so picky about denying all sorts of foods. I tried little pieces of earthworms. I tried little pieces of tilapia. I even tried a bit of a pinky, part of a pinky mouse, and it was a no-go. So I had to do what was my last resort, and that was trying to assist feed her. And to my surprise, the assist feed went very, very well. So, and obviously she's in her little cave because she does not like to come out, so, but that's okay. So nonetheless, though... I was kind of thrilled that the assist feeding went very, very well. Went much, much better than I thought, you guys. I thought she was going to be so squirmy about it and trying to, like, spit it all out and stuff. But to my surprise, she actually took it very easy. Once I got her mouth open and I prepped the piece of the tail, the mouse tail into her mouth, she then decided to go ahead and take care of it, and she swallowed it down, you guys. So, uh, obviously, that is kind of a good thing. But I think it could be just beginner's luck, too, so... But nonetheless, though, the breeder that sold me the snake, you guys, he is going to be sending me in, actually, some silver sides. Because that's what this little girl used to eat when she was with her breeder. So, nonetheless, though, I need to, I'm hoping he actually sends them in later in this week. But I don't know if that's going to happen or not. So, anywho, though, I hope you guys are awesome stuff to your day. Let's go ahead and see what we got here in the house. It's hard to believe, also, that we are already about to go into summer here, you guys, in Michigan. And... I don't know, it's just something special that I like about the month of June, you guys. Just seeing all of these green leaves, you guys, seeing them bloom right here. I mean, take a look at it, you guys. We finally are seeing spring officially here, you guys. Green leaves popping up all over the place and nice green grass, you guys. All the vegetation's growing back. And it's officially already feeling like 70 plus degrees here now for the last few days. But uh, something very interesting I wanted to share with you guys, too, is that... When it obviously comes to springtime, it is obviously meaning a lot of yard work. And let me tell you, I am not a big fan of yard work. I'm not going to lie to you. And, well, it won't be long until we start mowing the lawn again. So, uh, let me know in the comments below and tell me a little question here that I want to ask you guys. Tell me in the comments below what is your least favorite thing to do when it comes to yard work in outside, you guys. Tell me what, you, what it is, because for me, I, the variety of them is different, so... But really, I really don't know which one is probably the most boring. But at the same time, though, I mean, it's good to have a nice clean yard from time to time. So, but anywho, though, I'm going to go ahead and head inside, you guys, because the mosquitoes are going to probably come out any time now and start eating me alive. And let me tell you, it ain't going to be pretty. So let's just go ahead and see inside what else we got for you. Finally, it is time for me to get my hair cut. Ah, I don't know why. There's just something nice about fresh cut hair, everybody, that actually feels so smooth and nice. I don't know what it is, everybody, but I'm kind of glad all that shaggy hair on me that I had was actually gone now. But here, probably in another couple more months, it's going to be back on me. So but let me know what you guys say in the comments below. Do you guys also prefer me with long hair, or do you guys prefer me with this kind of hair? So, I mean, obviously, I'm kind of a mix in my own opinions between it, but I want to hear what you guys think in the comments down below. So, But nonetheless, though, I actually want to sh just, just bring up a little discussion with you guys, something that's kind of important to share with you. So, I did bring up earlier in the vlog, you guys, that my girl, my new garter snake here, I still don't have a name for her yet. Go in the comments below and give me some name, name suggestions. She has been a bit of a stubborn animal since I got her. She's only eaten one or two meals within the last month since I've had her. And she's kind of one of those animals that's kind of a picky eater. She's one of those animals that's a bit of a picky eater. And I've obviously have thought... I. Yeah, I, an idea just came into me to discuss with you guys on how can how you can convince a picky snake to finally take a meal, you know. Now, there's obviously, a, there is only like two or three ways that I'm going to, there's only two, there's two or three different ways I, I'm going to share with you guys. So, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and, and bring up the first idea that you guys can try. But even though, you got to remember you guys, these are not 100% guarantees that they will work. So... Most of the time they will they will work, but there are times when they they won't succeed. So 
let's go ahead and discuss the one way, the first kind of attempt that you guys can try to get a picky snake to eat. So obviously right off the bat, you guys, when we talk about, you know, trying to figure out, you know, like why is my snake being a picky eater, you know? The, the first thing you've got to try and figure out is, is getting to know your animal, you know? Like before, like let's say you just got in maybe like a little ball python, for example. You literally just purchased it from a breeder and after about a couple weeks after trying to quarantine it, you try to offer it its first meal and the snake is like having none of it at all. Like literally has having no interest in it whatsoever. Now you have to figure out, so what, what am I, you gotta figure, you gotta think, okay, so what am I doing wrong here? The, the one thing I definitely would try you guys is um, ask the breeder, like ask the seller what they've been feeding it beforehand when they sold it to you. You know, like, has it been eating, like, live frozen rodents, or has it been eating, like, chopped up pieces of frozen rodents? It's always important, you guys, to a ask, you know, like, the seller, you know, sometimes even before if you buy the animal, sometimes ask them what they've been feeding it, too, you know, it's really, really important so you can get a head early start, you know, to be prepared for feeding it the food the animal is wanting. Now, for other snakes, you guys, like, take, for example, like, garter snakes, um, garter snakes, right off the bat, you guys, not all of them are gonna be frozen like rodent eaters so they're not going to be all rodent eaters you guys some of them are going to be different some are going to probably like want some fish you know or maybe something might some might want like maybe earthworms but in reality though it's always important to have them actually believe it or not for, specifically for garter snakes have a like a variety of a diet you know so maybe like one when you're trying to feed a garter snake one day you know and it's feeding day for them how about try offering them like Maybe a little piece of like of tilapia, for example, you know, because a couple of my garter snakes do like tilapia here as well, you know, and because obviously for one reason, tilapia is theamnese free, you guys, and for what you guys don't understand what theamnese, I can't even say it, but nonetheless though, what I'm trying to say is here is that theam, blah, I can't even say the word, you guys, it's so hard to say it for, you know, like when you're not used to saying it so often, so what I'm trying to say is, um, it, what I'm, whatever the word is, you guys, I'm trying to say here is, it's actually la lacks efficiency or lack of vitamin, vitamin B, which is actually not that good for snakes, you guys, all snakes need vitamin B in them, you guys, which is very good for them, obviously, and when it comes to certain species of fish, you know, there are some out there that carry it. Thiaminice, I think it is, is the word. Some species of fish do carry it, and some don't, you guys. And obviously, tilapia is the theum. <laughs> it's a hard word to say, you guys. I'll, I'll have to practice a little bit here later in the vlog on trying to say it. So, but nonetheless, though, it's really important to get to know your animal. Actually, if you're trying to offer it food, you guys, and also, um, maybe even try you know, a few variety of different things, you guys. If you, like, let's say if your garter snake doesn't want tilapia, that's okay, you know. It, it's always a common for them, you know, to refuse a meal that most garter snakes are used to eating. But, um, there are other few options to try out, you guys. Maybe give it a few days afterward, and then try maybe something else, like a piece maybe of, like, a little small piece of, like, of earthworm, you know, and if it doesn't want that, go ahead and maybe a little, try a little piece of raw chicken. I mean, I know it sounds crazy to try it, but I think it could work though. So obviously there is, that's one of the few steps too, is to get to know what your snake has been eating, you guys. Figure out what it wants. Another reason too, you guys, is maybe one of the reason, a reason why sometimes your snake is being picky too. It could also be stress related too, because sometimes when a snake feels stressed, you know, like I'm going to show you guys my, my garter snake's little enclosure here, for example. Obviously you can see here, she lives in, she doesn't permanently live in this little container, you guys, but it's not the best setup, you know, and there's not enough like rich environment for her, you know, because obviously, um, I was planning on moving her into, uh, Lucy's old cage, but the cat, unfortunately, wrecked the screen top. And, and speaking of which, you guys, I did look online to see if there were any screen tops available for this specific zoom mat enclosure, and sadly, I can't find it at all online, so, um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and probably have to get a new cage. But anywho, back to what I was discussing is, is that... It's important to figure out what is wrong with your snake, especially when it's stressed. Now, obviously, she is going to be quite, she is quite stressed being in here, you guys, because she feels too exposed out wide out into the open. But ever since I added that little hide in there in the way back, she kind of feels a bit more secure. But she's also still not really interested in eating. So, 
obviously there is still something going on here so I'm obviously gonna have to try and figure something that out here later on but it is important to figure out what your animal wants to like what does its enclosure look like so I'm gonna go ahead and share you guys what Lucy's enclosure looks like too so upon looking at Lucy's cage here you guys can see it's pretty well decorated here you got like a, like a big branch in here you got some vines in here and also you got a little hide here as well and we actually also have like a dome lamp here that has that can provide some heat source to her as well she has like a warm side and a bit of a cool shady side over here so for my other garter snake's cage back here, you guys, in that little tub, it's kind of really difficult for her. So, obviously, it looks like on one side, she looks like it's going to be humid and warm, but on the other end, it could be the same way, too. And, of course, like I said, you guys, she, her cage, obviously, all she has is just a water bowl, a hide, and paper towel bedding. That's really not that much for a cute little baby snake. So, um... In reality, she's obviously going to need some more adjustments to add stuff, you guys. Definitely adding some better bedding in there. Obviously, possibly um, a nice green top cage and also a heat source for her as well. And definitely a cool side, a shady spot for herself as well. And so obviously, these two designs are completely different. But the animal that's in here, you guys, Lucy, she's super easy content in here because she doesn't really feel that exposed out in the open. Whereas the other snake that I have, again, it's a baby but she feels quite exposed out in the open and when she does she got, does get freaked out a lot so it's important to also figure out like the animal's tank setup you guys and if there is something wrong with the tank setup definitely got to try and figure out what the problem is so one trick actually that i learned actually in a in a reptile instruction video is like if you do have a little picky snake you guys whether it's like i said a baby corn snake a ball python or even a garter snake for that matter you guys if you actually can go ahead and actually place the animal inside a deli cup like this when for example go ahead and actually put the animal inside and also place the little bits of food item in there whether it's like a little pinky mouse an earthworm or even a fish fillet you guys go ahead and go ahead and put the animal in and the food in secure the lid on top and go ahead and place the animal actually in a secure location where it won't really get too stressed out you guys someplace maybe like an isolation for a little while and give it about maybe like 12 to maybe 15 hours you guys and see if it actually works out because usually after a long time the animals could be circling around and around at inside this cup you guys it's gonna eventually bump right into the prey item and most of the time from what I've heard online anyway is is the animal will eventually take the meal and probably eat it so now this trick though I have not had any luck with it but do I think um it could could it work for some people absolutely so this is I guess this is one of the few tricks you can actually try you guys but so far with this trick I haven't had any luck but I guess that's just my personal experience but from what I've heard with other keepers it's worked for them so maybe it's just a bit of case of bad luck for me. Now, if you guys have already tried several different tricks actually, or like techniques to try to convince your snake to eat you guys, and if they do not succeed, the only last option resort that I usually would only recommend, like I said, truly as a last option, you guys, is try to assist feed. Now, assist feeding, you guys, is, is how it works is you usually gotta pick up your animal and actually gently pinch it behind the head and is eventually grab the piece of food item and actually try to prop their mouth open and very gently try to get it into a little bit into their gullet you guys now you don't want to force it down their throat you guys because that's just going to really freak the animal out and it's going to obviously obviously cause it to spit it back out immediately so what i would do is you guys is if the animal does successfully grab the food immediately gently slowly let the animal, dangle the animal, and very slowly set the animal down. Because it's obviously trying to hang on to the food, you guys. Trying to figure out what it is. And, of course, like I said, if you gently jet it down, it don't really make any movements, you guys. The, an the chances are the animal is going to eventually start to actually adjust its jawline and eventually start to eat it so guys now again now the first try you guys of if you do an assist feed it's probably not always going to work out you guys so if the first try doesn't work you gotta have to eventually try again you guys so at least give it about three or four tries and if it doesn't work then maybe try again maybe in a few more days so i hope all this kind of info maybe helps a little bit so let me know in the comments below if you guys have any other tips or trick suggestions it would be really nice to hear that so I'm gonna go ahead and end this video here for y'all. I promise, see y'all on the next one.